do one very small outside cut. There you go. Medium rare, lots of fat, lots of flavor on the outside. Uh, got my Legion coffee cup. Branded. So this is kind of a long process. One, I've been really wanting to do this for you guys. Um, Cause I think it's, it's like the perfect Sunday roast. And we're getting into like the idea of fall even though I think we're having a couple hundred degree days this week. But I think as a general rule, we're getting into the idea of fall. Like if fall is gonna happen, here it comes. What I wanna do for you guys is uh, both a technique and a kind of food. So the food in question is a rib roast. And what we're going to do with this is uh, we're just gonna do what's called a reverse sear. So I got a two bone roast at the grocery store. I had them cut it for me. I have been doing my own little uh, dry age. I have a veggie drawer in the outside refrigerator. Uh, we keep the refrigerator in the, you know, 30s. Uh, so I was able to put this in, put it on paper towel in a dish in a closed space. I had a paper towel over the top of it, and that was just to wick away any moisture that would uh, come out of it. Uh, dry aging, this is only a week. A real dry age goes for weeks and weeks. But the dry aging sort of concentrates the beefy flavor. It sort of lets, uh, sort of lets the meat um, condense and develop its flavor and its awesomeness. The idea of a reverse sear is that it goes into the oven at a low temperature for uh, probably three hours. And the idea is you want to get the core of it, like the, the perfect meat that you're going to eat, to the temperature that you want it when it's done. So when you've taken it out of the oven and you've sliced it and it's just that perfect pink, a reverse sear is gonna do that. It's gonna be the same pink all the way through. And at the very end, you're gonna sear it in an oven that's about 550 degrees for maybe um, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, just to take this, this fat and all of this awesome stuff on the outside, you're just gonna crisp up. Because it's not gonna do that in the low heat. In the low heat, it's just going to uh, the fat's going to kind of relax and fall apart. We keep it in the low heat for three hours. We get the core to 126 degrees, depending on where you want it. That's medium rare. Uh, I usually take it out at 125, 126 at the most. You leave it on the counter for 40 minutes. So 40 full minutes. Uh, and that's going to have the effect of letting the juices that have been loosened up inside come back into the meat structure. And you're gonna let it all come back together. It's gonna to cool down and reabsorb, and then you're gonna stick it in a really super hot oven and just fry the outside of it, basically. Uh, air fry the outside of it so that you get that classic roast beef, but the instead of cooking it at a high heat or a higher heat, you've, you've got it so that the inside is perfectly done all the way through. So I'm gonna take this off of here. Pretty nice chunk of meat, so. I asked for a two bone, they cut it on two bones. They did not cut the bone away from the meat, which is good because I don't want them to. And it's got the USDA pink stuff on it. And it's got a really good marbling. It's not overly heavy, so it's definitely not a prime cut, but I mean, it's got like the nice, uh, that, that outside edge that has all the flavor in it. That's looking really good, separated by a really nice fat vein right here. And that flavor, the, the flavors in the fat. So um, when we serve it, we'll cut it away from the bone, take the bones off and probably gnaw on them because I'm ridiculous that way. And then we'll slice it. This probably has six servings. Uh, let's get cracking on just uh, seasoning this up. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay. Salt, pepper, that's it. It's so dry right now. Ah. It's so dry. Um, yeah, this is actually kind of ridiculous. It's cold, the fats are dry, nothing really wants to stick. I don't want to put oil on it yet. Um, putting oil on a roast is totally acceptable, but if you're wanting to use the pan drippings, it's gonna be, you know, less meat fat and more grapeseed. Just 
season it like a steak, basically. At the end of the day, I'm a home cook. So uh, I did go to culinary school, uh, but I also dropped out. This is our meat. Meat's gonna stay out for a while. I'm gonna come back to it in about an hour. Whack it in the oven. See you then. When we last met our heroes, we had this guy. And about an hour ago, before I got into cooking a bunch of other stuff, salted and peppered. This has been resting an hour. It's still cold. It's not hot. I'm putting it into a cast iron pan. So salt and peppered. It's just been sitting here, uh, bringing up to room temperature. I've got the oven on to uh, around 200 degrees. It's a little over. I need fresh rosemary. It's out in the backyard and I don't have time to go get it. So I'm just gonna, you know, put a little rosemary on top. You're gonna smell it. The whole house is just gonna smell like this. Throwing some garlic into the pan. Why not just take a whole toe of garlic and roast it? It's gonna make the house smell great. So a little olive oil on that. I'm not gonna put any oil on the meat. I'm just gonna let the meat go. It's got a little herb. It's got some garlic. It's just gonna pick up some of those flavors as it cooks very slow. Let's go, stick it in the oven. We'll check back in a couple hours. It's really heavy. Like and subscribe. This is gonna be awesome. Okay, I've got rice cooked in the rice cooker. I've got roast beef in the oven. Uh, it's, I need to take it out and I need to check the temperature. But I did just get hit by a fistful of steam, so that's promising that something's happening. Now, I've got our guy here, our happy guy. This is a, uh, I always look at the name. It's a thermopin. We're at 110. So the dead center is 110. Everywhere else is exactly where I want it to be. Reuse my same hole. Yeah, I'm getting closer to the surface, 115, 116, down at the bone, 126. Yeah, so right now, the center is still ultra rare. Um, and I do need that. So I'm going to, I'm going to put it in for a little bit longer, um, maybe 20 minutes. And then I'm going to take it out, let it sit, let the carryover heat. From the outside, bring the center to where I need it to be. And that's gonna be about 40 minutes. In the meantime, I'm gonna start a sauce, uh, just a kind of a brothy Japanese-inspired sauce, uh, because I am going to serve this over rice. So, this goes back in. Do 25 minutes. Alrighty, stay tuned. Okay, so I've taken it out of the oven. Um, so I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put it on the cutting board, I'm gonna put some uh, foil on it, and then it's gonna sit here for another 35 minutes. I took it out a few minutes ago. So uh, this, is, uh, this is pretty exciting. So this is like what a roast looks like. Put it on here, and we're just gonna want, uh, we're just gonna want it to uh, just sit here. Got some foil. Just gonna tempt it to keep the heat in. So we'll get the oven to 500 degrees. I've got a sauce going right now. Um, and then we're gonna do some plating. We're back. This has been a day. This is a long day of cooking. I've got an oven up to about 500 degrees. I have my, I put these in at 325 for a while while we were doing the thing. So I got to caramelize my garlic. And I'm just gonna pull it out of the pan because I wanna put the beef back in this pan. This is gonna be some amazing smoky goodness. 500 degree roast beast. There it is, just sitting. There's almost no moisture around it anywhere. Ha! Okay, we're gonna leave it uncovered. It's the right temperature. All the moisture is absorbed back into it. And I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna pop it in there 15 minutes, 20 minutes, tops. Okay, silicone things. 
heat escapes. Because I'm no dummy. That's not true. All right. Okay. We're at the end. This guy's. It's dark. Perfectly golden all over the top. The inside should be one specific temperature. Uh, it's pretty exciting. I know that pan's really hot and that meat's really hot and I have to move things. So, pasta guys. It's a beautiful hunk of meat. Uh, as you can see, the bones are still here. So I'm going to dig in here, find the bone, and run along it. There you have some beautiful, rare ribs. Rare ribs. Rub roll, we got rare ribs. So from here, I'll do one very small outside cut. There you go. Medium rare, lots of fat, lots of flavor on the outside. This is looking pretty amazing. Um, I've got some rice sitting in the rice cooker for the last couple of hours. But it looks like this. This is the scallion ginger yummy whatever. Work my way around that. So all the way to the edge, it's pink. I'm gonna put a little rice on it. So I want both. I haven't eaten all day. So I cut this up into little squares. Oh, so much for the, uh, the proper weight beating. This fork is now a shovel. Mmm. 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 <laughs> I don't have anything else to say. This sauce I made is perfect for it. The meat is perfectly done. All the way through. Edge to edge. Reverse sear. Perfectly pink. Perfectly. This is, you know. This is a reminder. Check the roast beef. <laughs> One more. She's reminded me. This is a reminder. Check the roast beef. Oh, I checked the roast beef. It's amazing. Subscribe, like, learn how to make these delicious dishes and cooking styles. And ah, all right, bye.